All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 420-ish of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Today, I've got a special guest with me, Steve Ronnie, the author, the world-famous author, of nice. the new Pictures Alive <laughs> book, which covers, I guess, the period 1981 through 86, roughly. And then you do have additional uh, KISS shows featured in from the reunion and the farewell tours, right? That's correct. So it's a good opportunity for people to get to see and meet the person behind one of these books, which is available and shipping now. It exists. It's in print, correct? That's correct. So this it's is available. not a pre-order. No, it's available now. It's selling now. Uh, so straight off the top, you know, let's just let everyone know that uh, they can order the book from picturesalive.net, um, right. which is your, your primary website. But let's talk about the book. As a Bay Area resident, which we both are, you've been here a long, much longer than me. Um, and the, all of these shows were shot in the Bay Area. What was... Right. You know, what was your introduction to music, number one? Before we get into the photos, what got you into music and were you always into hard rock? Yeah, and, you know, right up your alley, it was Kiss. It was Kiss. I had to share a room with my older brother when, you know, I was 10, 11, 12 years old. And I remember the day he brought home the Kiss Alive record. You know, this is late, probably 75. And he played it so much that it just wore on me. And within a year, I started to like them more. So since I'm liking them more, he's liking them less. And since we had to share a room, now posters are going up, all Kiss, you know, on my half of the room. And, and it, it started with Kiss. It was my first concert in 77 when I was 13 years old, the day Elvis died at the Cal Palace. And, and that's what it was. It started right there. And then, you know, I started, I learned, I started playing guitar around the same age. And that was it for me. I mean, and after that, it was ACDC, Van Halen, Dio, you know, Judas Priest and all the great bands, you know, that was it. Around that time I was 12, 13, I was hooked. Yeah, and if people go to the website and take a look at the About Steve page, eagle-eyed viewers will see a Kiss trash can under your desk. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been, this, offered, I've been offered 500 bucks for it, and I haven't sold it yet. No, keep it. Keep it. Yeah. Those, those, those things are too, are too precious. Yeah. Um, but as, as a music fan, you know, what is your go-to Kiss album then, since they're the band that got you in? What's, what's the go-to album and your favorite Kiss song? Uh, my favorite Kiss song is um, Rock Bottom, the live version on the live one album. That was that was the song that got me hooked. Whatever it was, I just I think that's one of the cool songs, just the intro into into every, a whole band kicking in. And my favorite album's got to be Destroyer. That's the one that you know, uh, one of the first albums I ever bought was probably Destroyer. So yeah, that'd be my. It's hard to see the live because has all the good songs on it, but studio wise, it's it's Destroyer for sure. Right, absolutely. And you're you're a player. You play guitar as well, don't you? Yes, yes, sir. What's yeah. your favorite? I, do, you, do you play any Kiss on the guitar? You know, I've played. Uh, you know, the last oh gosh, t twenty years, I've played in different uh, cover bands. Uh, one called Rap Bastard, and we played everything. You know, UFO, Kiss, uh, Y&T, uh, Montrose, a lot of ACDC and some Kiss. But you know, I, honestly, I don't know a lot of Kiss songs. I just I, I don't know a lot of the Kiss stuff, you know, unless we have to learn it for the band. I, I don't, I don't really learn them. <laughs> you nice. Know? Nice. Well, let's talk about this book. You know, what, what was it that made you, you know, start going to concerts and you've already said your first concert was obviously Kiss 77 yeah. Palace. Yeah. You know, what was, what was it in the four years between 77 and 81 that made you decide, I want to start taking some photographs of these shows that I'm attending? Well, even in the book, I say on the first page that I was just uh, really impressed with just the, the um, pictures that were in the magazines like Hip Parader and, and Circus and, and uh, Cream and thinking, wow, those are just, you know, and all the bands we like. Kiss in particular are so photogenic that how can you not like, you know, uh, seeing them in magazines? Because there's something to look at, you know what I mean? And they never get boring. You never get boring taking pictures of Kiss for one. And um, I just thought it was a cool thing. And then my freshman year in high school, around 79, 80, I took a photography class and, uh, and I started to really get in, take an interest in it. And 
my dad noticed it and he bought me my first camera, which I mentioned in the book. And uh, my first attempt was uh, in 1980, uh, Michael Shanker was opening for Cheap Trick. And I got my camera in, and, but I didn't get anything really good as far as pictures. You know, I, I was still learning the craft, so to speak. And uh, it took me a few. The next one was Rainbow in early 81. Those came out even worse. And then I did Judas Priest in May of 81. Those came out okay. And then I was kind of getting the hang of it. And I thought, you know, I got to get, I got to really get down close as I can to the crowd. And um, my buddy, Dale Miller, who I mentioned in the book, um, who went, who went with me to most of these shows, uh, would put me on his shoulders. So now I'm above the crowd and I have a straight shot to the stage, you know, no hands in the way. And the only problem is we're getting, you know, moved around a lot. So a lot of my pictures came out blurry or out of focus or low lighting. So I'd be lucky to get a few good shots out of a whole roll, you know? So it was always, a ch you know, you never, I never knew what I was going to get until it was developed, you know, but it was always fun. It was a lot of fun to do it. Yeah. Everyone's a concert photographer now with the iPhones now, right, and, some, right. and some of the cameras. Yeah. Um, I've been fortunate to shoot a concert with a real camera once um, utopia. Um, and it's a challenge to shoot without flash. Um, especially in a concert environment. Yeah. I, and I wasn't getting jostled because I was on the soundboard shooting. So you're get, you're up on someone's shoulders. You're, right. you're, you're shooting. And, and what I like about the shots is that they're not your average audience shots with a 110 camera. They actually look like right. they are, well, they're higher end, number one, because they don't have a head in front of them. You know, right. Um, right. what were some of the challenges with, uh, you know, learning how to shoot in those lighting circumstances? Because obviously you did say that, you know, some of them blurry. Uh, oh, yeah. Of... Well, I, I knew right away I couldn't use a flash. That's going to, you know, you know, you, you take a picture with a flash at a concert, the security's going to see you. You're busted. You couldn't do it. Right. And you got to be really close to use a flash. Otherwise, it's not going to it's not going to work properly. So, um after three or four times doing this, I realized the only time I could take pictures is when the bright lights were on. When the bright lights were on, that's enough to get a decent shot, okay? And I remember there was times I'd be up on Dale's shoulders, and you know, I'm a light guy. I've always been a light guy. And he'd hoist me up, and I, I, I would sometimes wait there for a minute or two, waiting for the lights to get bright to take pictures. And if nothing, if nothing came on, I would tap him on the head and say, okay, that means put me down. Put me down, you know? And, uh, and we would do this four or five times a show, but the key is I didn't do this the whole time because I wanted to enjoy the concert. So I may be taking pictures for five, 10 minutes total because otherwise you're not paying attention to what's going on. Right. So I always brought for the most part, always almost brought one roll of film. Sometimes I brought two, but generally one roll of film and that would be it. You know, hope for the best is what I, how I looked at it. And then when I was done, I would take the film to get developed. And back then, you know, it was three or four days. I couldn't wait. And Dale and I would go and he'd go with me. And we, it, was like, it was like Christmas going to open a present because you, you were just so excited. We were excited to see, okay, did I get anything good? And if I did, then I'd blow them up and I'd frame them and put them on my bedroom walls. And at one time, I had 160 frame 8 by 10 shots on all four walls when I lived at home. <laughs> wow. I mean, talk about make your own posters. Well, the posters, sense. yeah, the old posters would come down and my shots would go up. So before, That's... yeah, before it wasn't long until all the posters were gone and, and just all my, you know, all my photos were up there. The only thing was, if we ever had an earthquake, like, all these glass frames are going to come down on top of me, you know, but uh, it was fun. And uh, and when people would come over the first time, they would just be like, wow, look at these pictures. You know, we look all around and couldn't get over, it, you know, so that's what I did. In, in this book, you've got over 40 concerts featured uh, spanning 81 to 86 and uh, the, the 96 and 2000 Kiss ones, uh, 300, 300 pages. What's, do you know the total photo count in there off the top I of your think, head? I uh, think, I want to say it's four, 410, I believe. That's I think a lot it's, of photos. it's 400, 410 photos. And those are just what we thought were the, you know, my best ones. Of course, I have, you know, more, but I don't think, you know, someone said you're going to do another book. Like another book, I don't, I don't have them. I don't have enough to do another book and doing one work, doing one book was, you know, a lot of work as it is. So we just put everything in one and hope people enjoy it, you know?
So how did the process start for uh, narrowing down or selecting the list of shows that we're going to feature? Were these 40 shows strictly the ones that came out the best um, in terms of the material that you had to work with? Um, or were there some that you left on the cutting room floor because they just didn't resonate with you anymore? Yeah. And like I mentioned earlier, it was the first three or four didn't make it because they just weren't any good. Okay. And that was Shanker in eight, 1980, uh, Rainbow in 81, uh, Jews Priest 81. And uh, uh, I, think that was, I think that was it. And after that, no, everything I did is in there. Everything, because I got, fortunately, I would get some good ones. And if you, if you go through the book, you'll notice there might be only a couple pages of one particular band. But then the next time, there's 10 pages of like Kiss from Creatures of the Night. So I got a lot of great shots from that show, you know, which I know this, you, you have fan base from that for, for Kiss. So I got lucky on that on that 83 uh, Creatures of the Night tour. I got some good shots there, you know, or Van Halen. I got some great shots where there's multiple, multiple great shots. You know, I just never knew. But I didn't want to put anything that 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 was uh, not, you know, uh, I didn't want to put just anything in there. I want to make sure they were good quality pictures. And that's what we yeah. did. And, and that creature show. Oh, my goodness. The yeah. photos that you've got in there are absolutely spectacular. But you've also got other Kiss shows. You know, yeah. 80, 80, um, you've got 83, 83, so creatures, 84, um, 85, 85. So look it up, animalize the look it up ones are fantastic. Which era of those kiss photos really are the ones that you're like really proud of out of those kiss shows? Forget the reunion. And okay. Farewell, I was, was, from- was going to go there. <laughs> um, oh, for sure. The creatures before the, the creatures, uh, show was, was great. And, um, again, I got, I just got lucky and got, you know, some good shots from that show. And I even say in the book, when it came to the, the lick it up, uh, tour, which was just like a year later, it was really hard to see these guys without the makeup and, and costumes. And, and they mimicked the, the same tour from the year before. It was the same, you know, the same stage and the, and the, the tank and everything was on the same lick it up tour as it was. So it was really like seeing them again just without the makeup and, and, and regular clothes. So it was a big change, but the creatures, uh, you know, we, we were excited to go to that show, my friends and I, and uh, I'm glad I got, I got those shows that, that those pictures from that show. Yeah. One, one of the other shows that, that jumps out at me, obviously is um, Aerosmith. Oh yeah. Were you, yeah. were you were you an Aerosmith fan prior to that? Because you saw them on the back in the saddle tour. Yeah. They were raw and rough and not quite fixed yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I saw Aerosmith. We have this thing that you're probably, you might be familiar with. Back in the late seventies and early eighties, we had these uh, stadium concerts at Oakland called the day on the green. Yep. Okay, and they, they, they would do what, four five, six shows a summer. And that was a big thing in the summertime, just, you know, outdoors. And Aerosmith played with, it was Ted Nugent, Aerosmith, and ACDC with Bon Scott, okay? This is July of 79. So I got to see Aerosmith there. Um, you know, they were still original before Joe Perry left. And to tell you the truth, I like, always liked Aerosmith, but they weren't, they weren't one of my favorite bands just because I like Kiss, I like ACDC, I like Ted Nugent then, you know, and Van Halen. But, I mean, you, you, how can you not like Aerosmith? I mean, their stuff was great. So to go to that show in 84, you're right, that was like the reunion thing, I, I believe. Yep. And they did not, they did not have an album. I don't think they were touring off any new material. So the set list was great. And um, so I'm glad I saw that and got pictures of them, of that, of the original guys. It was great. Yeah. They, they had one new song in that set and it was a Joe Perry project song that the music, the music is, yeah. actually that may not even have been in the set in, in uh, August. I don't remember. I've just done a book on them. I should know it, but I, that's why I can't remember anything. You know, we, write it down. we have the set list on, on each, on each page. We have the set list that the guys played and I think it's in there. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's one of the nice design features in this book. Each uh, section starts off with your, uh, a ticket stub. Yeah, the, the, the band, the opening band, the date, um, a, a brief narrative about the show, whatever the context is that, you know, so it right. varies uh, yeah. down to shooting the show to other stuff and the backgrounds. The design's absolutely beautiful. You've worked with a designer, Scott Davis, on this project. How did you meet him and, uh, you know, sing, sing your praises of what oh, you yeah. brought into the project? Here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into this just a little bit. Scott is the one who made this book look like it does. Okay, I took the pictures years ago, okay? And we, we met shortly after the Creatures 
tour in 83, just from a mutual friend. And this friend said, hey, I got a buddy, Scott, who would love to see these kids, you know, these kids pictures. So he brought him to my house and he was, he was just blown away. And he's a few, he's a few years younger than I am. So he was probably, if I was a senior, he was probably a freshman or a sophomore. And we just became friends from that, from that point. Um, so, so Scott was always familiar with my photos. So fast forward to July, of two years ago, to July, 2020, I called him up. I said, Hey, you know, I knew, I knew of his design skills for sure. I suggested this idea about doing a, doing a book with my photos, which he was familiar with. And he, right away he says, yeah, let's do it. That's great. And Scott had the idea for the, uh, the tickets, adding the tick stubs. It was his idea to add the set list. It was his, it was his idea really for all the design work. And he would tell me about it and I, I did my two cents, but most of it was him. You know, he, he loved the ticket um, idea. And one thing he pointed out that one thing he said that I really, really still this day love is when it came time to discuss the cover, I told Scott, well, just my two cents is I envision uh, a picture of a crowd. It's at a concert. And then maybe um, maybe a dozen of my pictures just as a collage over. them. OK, and then we'll have the title of the book. So he came up with and people that are over 40 will understand this. He came up with doing exactly that, but they're film strips with, with different guys on the film strip. I, I thought that was great. I thought that was really, I loved it right away. You know what I mean? Instead of just putting random pictures, he made film strips. They're not the original film strips, but he, and he put Van Halen here and Gio or Ace, you know, Angus or Rob. I just loved it. So I was really impressed with that, but everything he did was great. And uh, he, he's the one that made this book look like it does. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, one of the things that screams quality is he's got a very good design perspective. It's not too busy. It's not crowded. No. Yeah. The, the pages breathe where they need to. So, uh, again, I've got, got it open to the Aerosmith one, a, a great full page, you know, of Steven Tyler to start off yeah. with and then splits into the other guys. I'm curious about one of the things on this is, you know, Black and Blue opened for that show uh, that night. Did you ever shoot opening acts as well? Um, because I don't think you really feature them as much in this as the primary artist on those. Yeah. Stops. Oh, yeah. It's a good question. Uh, the only time I did that was um, for, no, I don't, I don't, I'm sure I didn't shoot black. But I did a couple times, for example, um, Motorhead opened for Ozzy in 81 at the Santa Cruz civic auditorium. And that's one of the first concerts that's featured in the book. And I took a couple pictures of them, but they didn't come out any good. Okay. And then, uh, few, uh, then in 83, I know Queens, right. When they first got on the scene, open for Dio. And I got a few pictures of them that's in that book. Okay. And there's another time when except open for Saxon in 84, I got a few pictures of them. I mean, just a few, but they, they made it to the book, which was kind of cool when they're, and these guys were young, you know, especially Queens, right. They were, they just had an EP out at the time. So they were just, just coming out. And I remember, I remember my friends and I, you know, heard the song, the right and we like oh my god who's you know who is this right and uh so they were touring with just having that ep and they had other songs that would come out uh they would play that came on the next album the warning but you know they were good man they were they were raw and they were good so i, I got a couple pictures of that in 83 that was fun but we also flipped the uh, the coin over that with def leopard 81 blackfoot well, yeah but we were we, we my friends like we were there to see def leopard not black and that was a co-headlining thing. Okay, that wasn't like Def Leppard was opening. I don't even remember if there was an opening band. Uh, maybe not, but no, that was a, uh, from, my, from what I remember, that was a double bill thing. It just happened that Def Leppard played first. We didn't even know who Black it was. We didn't, we didn't even care. We don't even know who they were. And uh, so we were there 100% to see Def Leppard. And that's why I only got pictures of them there. <laughs> so... I hear one of my co-hosts, Ken, screaming. He's he's a Blackfoot fan and I'm introduced sorry. them I'm to sorry. me. Um, and that that album they were touring on in '81 is actually really good. Uh, Marauder. We oh, well, we're checking out on Spotify. Okay, at the time, you know, we're kids. We're 16 years old. We didn't we didn't know who they were. That's all. You know what I mean? And I, I bet we, you know, I'm sure we stuck around to check them out. I know Ricky Medlock was the guitar player, and they had that song "Train." Um, just didn't know their material at the time. Yeah. So. Um, I don't remember them, be, you know, I don't remember them being bad by any means. Just, it was kind of a strange mix, you know, Blackfoot and Def Leppard, um, kind of a strange uh, combination. Strange. But, it, you know, but it, you know, it was okay. It was fine. I've seen worse, <laughs> but it was good overall. 
So getting back to some of the, the, the things about photographing a concert back in the days where they would actually come and grab your camera, grab your film. Um, you, you start off obviously with a story about that kind of, uh, and I don't want to ruin that one because okay. it is, you know, uh, you know, the first part of the, the book really. Yeah. But what were some of the challenges? Do you ever have those situations at other shows where you're like, I've drawn too much attention to myself. I got to get ready. And, and what were the hassles that you would go through to get a, a camera in uh, to these venues back in well, the day? How serious yeah. was it? It was, yeah, I mean, because, you know, again, no cameras were ever allowed at a concert. I mean, I, I don't remember ever a concert that you can bring cameras, right? And what I found out was if I got past security, and I'll, t and I'll tell you here how I did it, um, concerts at the Cow Palace here were always general admission. So once I got past security and into the venue, I was fine. Because once you go down on the floor where all these pictures are taken from, you know, got to remember, we're packed in there you know, really tight. There's no way security team be able to get to me. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's, they can't get to me. There's no way. But at a reserve seating concert, and Oakland Coliseum often had reserve seating, much different because you're sitting in a seat, there's security all around, very difficult. And I got caught. I mean, I talked about, I got caught at, at Van Halen um, in 81 at the Fair Warning Tour. And I was, I, I talked about how that went and I wasn't very happy about it. <laughs> but as far as getting the camera in, and I talk about it on the first page, is I would take the camera lens, which was a zoom, off the body of the camera. And I had a black members only jacket. And what I would do is I would I would take the lens and I would stick it inside the sleeve of the jacket under my arm. Okay. And then I would take the body of the camera and do the same thing on the other sleeve. And then I would push up, I would push up the sleeves so I look kind of bulky, right? And then I would take the camera strap. And I wrapped it around my belt, around my waist like a belt. So what I would do when I walked, when it was my turn to get pat, and I always got very nervous. I always got very nervous. When I when I got up to the security, I would lift, I would lift my jacket open like like I'm Superman, like I'm not high, so I'm not hiding anything. And most of the time, they would just pat me up to my elbow, not knowing two inches away is the camera or the lens. And once they did that, that was it. And I'd walk in, and I I could breathe, you know breathe a sigh of relief and I, but I always get nervous. And the few times I did get caught, everyone wants to see what I'm trying to sneak in. It's embarrassing. And I'm holding up the line. People are getting pissed off, but now, you know, security wants to see what I'm, and they, they always think it's alcohol. They want to, they want to see what do you, you know, what do you got? And, uh, you know, if it was a camera, you can't bring it in. You know what I mean? So, what but it happened in those, what would you do in those situations when you did get rumbled in line before getting in? Uh, well, was it, uh, was it not go or was there a, an ability to have the camera held until after the show or something. No. Okay. So one time I even talked about this Van Halen, uh, 82 on the diver down tour at the Cal palace. Um, the, one of the first times I brought two rolls of film to the concert and I had a roll of film in the, I always had the film in the camera. And then again, I think this was the first time I ever took, I maybe took second roll and I handed it to my friend and he put it in his shoe. And when we got patted down, I got caught. I got caught and the guy goes, what is that? And I pull it out and it's a camera. He goes, Hey, you can't, you can't bring a camera. You got to bring it back to your car. I said, I was lying. Of course I said, I got, I don't have a car. I got dropped off. I go, why don't you just take my film? And that just came to me. I don't know where, I don't know. I, I just thought of it like that. And he goes, do you only have one roll of film? I go, yeah, just take my film. So he took the film and let me bring the camera. In. Nice. So once we got in my buddy, Al, gave me his film and the pictures I got from that show from 1982 are the ones where Eddie's jumping in the air. And, you know, I got a lot of good shots from that show because, because I decided to bring a second roll of film that one time. <laughs> I, I, I will say this to my fellow music fans out there, the Van Halen shots. Yeah. You, you've got a lot of good shots yeah. in there. Yeah. That was, I got lucky on that show. And the, the, here's the, here's the difference. Van Halen always had good bright lights. So, easier to take photos you know what i mean or you know to, to have a you know um just better chance of having photos coming out because there's a bright because you have no snow flash i gotta have those bright lights on them to get a decent shot and they always had great lighting they always did that was that wasn't the problem you know then i go see black sabbath well they're gonna have dark lights because they're more doom and gloom and 
I got a few good shots, but I was, I remember being disappointed. Like, Oh, I wish I would have got more shots on that mob rules tour, but I got a few, you know what I mean? So it just depends on the lighting. It always came down to that. Always came down to that. So. Yeah. And you weren't too overt about it. You know, you see, you shoot for a few minutes, then you'd be back down because you want to watch the show. I wish fans today would listen to that message. Don't shoot the whole show guys, you know, enjoy yeah. it and one of the most the most fun i've had in recent years was at a show where i only took five or six photos i didn't try and take a ton i put my camera away and, and enjoyed the moment yeah uh, you you this this only goes up through 86 really why is that okay so that's a good good question so by 86 honest to god i had everyone i wanted more than once i mean i had multiple acbc shows i had multiple Van Halen shows, multiple, multiple Dio shows. Multiple. So I kind of, and to tell you the truth, it was, you know, we had, I had done this maybe 60 plus times because not all of them are in the, in the book. And, um, you know, it, it, it's tough, you know what I mean? And, but again, I was just, I was at, okay with what I had, but I definitely wanted to get that Dave Lee Roth tour, the Eat Him and Smile, his solo. I wanted that for sure because of his band. And after I took those, I was like, okay, I'm good. You know, um, I don't need to take anymore. But then 10 years later, in 96, when News of the World and Kiss was reuniting with original members, and I don't have pictures of original Kiss, I go, I got to get pictures of this. I got to try to get pictures of this. So that's why there's a 10-year span, because I, I just didn't do anymore after 86 until Kiss came around. So, so how had things changed in that ten, in 10 years? And uh, I got to ask, you had no interest in getting Sammy Hagar's version of Van Halen? Not, a, not, not one. And I went to those shows. I went to all of them. And, and honestly, I looked at this way. Well, I got some pretty good shots of Sammy right before he joined Van Halen on his own. I got plenty of Van Halen pictures of Eddie and the band, right? Um, so I really, you know, I always felt I was very comfortable with what I had. And again, it, it's, it was getting to a point where it was getting to be a lot of work doing it, uh, taking the photos and stuff. So, no, I mean, I was, I, I was okay with it. Yeah, I was okay stopping and not doing it. So to answer your second, the other question, so when I started taking pictures again in 96, the film got better, lighting got better, developing got better, and uh, I saw a big difference, especially with the Kiss Farewell in 2000. Oh, my goodness, I saw a big difference. And uh, that's just, you know, technology <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to call you out on uh, your – I was at this show as well, Oakland 2000. Thank mm. you for that picture of Gene. That is which, absolutely which one? <laughs> the, the, the lead off image. Oh, flame, it, flambe it, Jean. You can't see, but it's right, it's right behind me right here. That is one of the nicest audience shot photos of, mm. of Kiss. And I think that's one of the important things of the fans need to remember, that these are not a photographer in the photo pit. Exactly. This is a guy yeah. from the audience shooting these. So these are not your average audience 110 shots. These are shot on 35 mil, correct? Exactly. 35 millimeter, millimeter film, film. And again, this was reserved seating, as you remember. Okay. And I remember my friends, like we had seventh row seats for this show. So we were pretty close. And I remember dodging security more than a few times, but I probably brought three rolls of film that show. And I learned my lesson that, you know, if you're taking pictures, don't, you know, if I get half a roll and I'm, I think I got some good shots, roll up the film, pass it on my buddies, pop another roll, film it. And that's what I did. I, I you know, I, I, you know, people will read the first Van Halen 81 where I, I didn't do that. And I got caught. So I learned over the years, don't be greedy. You know, if you get half a roll of shots, be fine with it, roll it up, pass it to your friend, put another roll in. So at least you get some shots if I get caught on the next roll. So yeah, but I was really happy with the way those kiss went. We saw them three three times that 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 year, and I took I got pictures for each three, each show, and I was really happy. I was really happy with what I got from those those last three kiss shows. So those three shows are in here. Kiss, uh, kiss ninety six is in here. Kiss eighty three, eighty four, eighty five. You've got Black Sabbath. You've got Dio. You've got uh, Van Halen, Def Leppard, Aerosmith, and more. I mean, there are bands that. I, I mean, I'm still going through this because there's so much to look at. I love ticket stubs, so I'm going through yeah. all that. You've got for the Bay Area. You're righteous. You've got Y and T in there as you, there you go. should. Yeah. Um, you know, Gamma. 
I mean, yeah. that's, yeah. you know, you, you've got a really good mix of things, but I mean, people can go over to picturesalive.net and, uh, you know, check it out. The word of mouth asked one of my friends who already got his book. I think he ordered a few days ago, arrived today. He's been through it. I said, was it value for money? He's like, hell yeah. You know, so uh, very pleased with it so far. Hopefully the reviews continue to be good. But what would you like, um, you know, to, as we wrap up, you know, what would you like to say to people who are thinking about purchasing this book? You know, when Scott and I started this thing, um, you know, I would say to him when we were doing this, you know, in the very beginning, I said, hey, I go, Scott, you think you think anyone's really going to give a shit about these photos? He goes, yeah, man, there's something here. Because trust me, you got something here. Because yeah, I remember I've been looking at my photos for 40 years and I love them. I still love them to this day, but I didn't know if there'd be much interest. But the word we've been, it, it's amazing. Julian, what we've been hearing, we've been hearing, and we even say on the back of the book, take a journey back to your youth. And more people said, oh man, it brings you back to that concert when I was 16, 17 years old. Because most of the people that buy this book were at some of these shows in their town or wherever, and they just remember good times. They really do. And that's why there's a mix of all the bands and not just one band. It's, it's, it's 23 different bands, I think. And uh, again, we had fun doing it. And uh, we didn't want to charge too much because we're not out making, we're just, we're not out making big money <laughs> off this book. We want to make it affordable. And so people can enjoy it. And it weighs nearly three pounds. It's 300 pages. And the word that's really gratifying to us, I've heard more than once it's professional. Yes. And that's great for two guys who n never really did this before. And again, a lot of that goes to Scott's creativity and design skills, but really happy with it. And uh, it's our age group, really. You know what I mean? If you're between, you know, 50 and 60 or 45 and 60, uh, you can relate to this stuff pretty good. And it's great. It's just, I mean, I've been, I've been holding on to these things for 41 years, man. And I, I, I never shared them. And um, finally, I got to a point where, you know, maybe, maybe we should see, you know, why not? You know, let people see if, you know, they want these pictures and um, I'm okay with it. You know, I never sold them before and I gave more away than anything back in the day. I had friends want, I just give them to them you know, and, or friends of a friend and just pay whatever it costs me or I, or I, I, I give them more out than I can count, but it was, you know, you know, maybe people I was with at the concert or whatever. So now it's a book. It's great. Um, we're really excited about it. It's been, it was a fun project to do. And it was two years. I'll say this. It was two years in the making. And during that time, I didn't tell a soul I was doing this book. I didn't tell anyone. My wife knew a little bit, but I didn't tell anyone. And the reason I didn't tell anyone, because you know, you tell someone you're working on a book with your photo, that's a pretty big statement. There was no guarantee we were going to finish this thing. Okay. And the last thing you want to do is a year later, people, hey, Steve, where's that book you're working on? Right. So I said nothing. And then the other thing, I want to surprise a bunch of my friends with it. So when we got the books, uh, I had 25 cents to me, and Scott got the rest of them. We ordered almost 1,100 books. And what I did was um, I sent out about 18 books to friends who had no idea it was coming. I'd call them up, say, hey, uh, send me your address. And I would tell them something's going to come. They thought it was a prank, but it wasn't. And uh, some of the people, I met, I pretty much sent one to everyone that's in the book. If I mentioned their name, I, would, I wanted to send them a book. Nice. And they were, just, they were just blown away. And I only used first names of the book, but they knew who they were. And uh, it was important to me to, 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 to mention, because I didn't do this by myself. I mean, my friend Dale was, uh, you know, hoisting on his shoulders most of the time. If it wasn't Dale, it was Frank or Brian or someone else. So I had a lot of help. I didn't do this by myself. Um, I was just like, it just seemed like I was the only one at the concert with a camera. I, you know, I look around and no one else is taking pictures. And then once they saw my camera, they'd always give me the thumbs like, oh, right on, man, you got your camera and good luck, you know? So that was always kind of nice. But I just wanted to surprise people once, once the book came. And, uh, and it's been a lot of fun so far. So I hope people enjoy it. I think you will if you like those bands. If you like those bands. And the other thing, too, it's kind of cool. I'll leave it with this. Is all these photos of these bands is when these guys were in their prime. It's when they're in their prime. And that's what I like about it. You know what I mean? And that's probably one of the other reasons why I stopped because I didn't want to take pictures of guys when they're old, older like us. You know, I got them when they're, you know, mid, late 20s, early 30s. And, and it's great. So we're really happy with that. That's brilliant. But let's leave it on that because there's no other way to end the show than on such a positive note. Check out Steve's book. 
at picturesalive.net, available for twenty nine ninety five plus postage, available now, shipping now, um, it, and it's worth it, especially if you're a fan of rock photography from the audience uh, or just these bands. And Dave Lee Roth, that tour was my first concert, so thank you for was having it really? that. Wow, it was it really? Yeah. So, so thank you for having that. But for now, from us at the Kiss FAQ podcast, we appreciate you joining us, Steve. Um, Julian, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, this has been fun. This, just for the record, this is my first podcast, first time I've ever been on. So I'm glad I was with you. And, uh, you know, again, I feel like I met a new friend and uh, we'll stay in touch and maybe do this again. But this was a lot of fun. Thanks for uh, having me on. We really appreciate it. Congratulations. You've passed the audition. <laughs> oh, now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.